stop the recording uh, and I'm going to put yeah the screen uh Mudemba I I it's Mudemba back no, no, I'm, yeah, I'm here. oh okay yeah I figured I figured something out um although I won't be seeing I will not be able to see uh to see your comments uh you'll just have to speak guys uh, but I've got everything oh, okay. on the on the screen, and I won't be able to see my notes anymore. So we'll just we'll just move because to, today's session is not supposed to be that long. Okay. All right. So, yeah. Sorry, guys, about 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 all of that. Uh, didn't expect to go through all of this. Last week we actually went through uh, the first part of um, of the book of Psalms, and we've discussed a lot from even all different kinds of psalms that are found throughout the Bible and everybody that is involved in uh, in writing psalms that not everything is in the book of psalms and how important they are even at the end we'll be singing um, at the end um, of the world and when we join the Lord and even in heaven they sing as we speak and even in the future we'll be singing uh, the praises and the psalms, you know, so if you are serious about your Christian life, really you should be able to, uh, you know, to expect that there'll be a lot of singing and, and uh, everything in, in heaven uh, that would be reciting these psalms. And we discuss the psalms, you know, where it comes from, and it actually means praises. And but it's not only about uh, praises. We, you know, there's prayers. If you really want to learn how to pray correctly, guys, you know, um, psalms is the best way. You know, I never used to believe actually in um, prayer books until. Uh, when I read the Psalms, you know, these things are actually written so that you, you, if you want to pray, you can you are able to pray this thing uh, from, uh, from, 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 from the prayers that are already written, you know, uh, and uh, they are good prayers. So the songs, these prayers, so it's actually, it falls under the writings and not under the pro uh, prophetic books or the law, as we have seen. All different kinds of of of, um, of uh, types of Bible books, and it's because it is poetic, and you know, it is it is actually literature. It's um, uh, it's creative writing, so it needs to be interpreted creatively. So you don't have to interpret everything um, uh, as um literally so you know what uh, these things are also offered to judges and uh, to judges and not only to to judges and kings but people that are people that are uh, of high uh, status and, and and everything and last week i've even shown you videos of uh, our own african um praise and poets uh, that are doing it for their uh, um, uh, their um, their leaders, you know, and how God is our sovereign King, and uh, He deserves to have all those praises and and uh, worship uh, from our prayers and everything that we call Psalms. So we actually even this. Um, Discussed that the book actually is divided into three, uh, into five books actually, uh, and these books what they were doing they were collecting different psalms and grouping them according to where they belong. So now these are the authors um, uh, that are contained. So David wrote most of the psalms. If you remember, he wrote seventy three uh you know uh out of 150 or 151 with an extra one from uh, the septuagint so um so he wrote more than half so david is a very important figure uh in the book of psalms so 
the sons of Korah also wrote some. Uh, who is Korah again? Korah. Does anybody remember who Korah is? Um, Rachel. Um, the one who betrayed Moses, no? Yes, you know, um, yeah, he's the one that betrayed Moses and he tried to take over the power. Uh, and yeah, he's the one that, you should remember, God opened the, the earth and uh, he was sent to Shaol. Um, uh, do you guys rem uh, remember what Shaol is? I know maybe on this, I don't know if I, we shared it on this. Oh, yeah, in the beginning, we actually sh shared it. Shaol. Do you remember where Shaol is? Because it actually comes even in a few times in the book in, when you're reading Psalms. Like when David says, even if I make my bed um, in Shaol, excuse me. Um, there you are with me. Where should I? Where can I escape from the spirit of the Lord? So where is Shaol? Maureen? Uh, you you would have to unmute because I um, I wouldn't see everything. I don't know what's your word. perhaps you can tell us. It's, um, it's in the ground somewhere. Um, hell, I think. I'll call it hell. Oh, uh, yes. Um, it is true, but not 100% accurate. It is true. Hell, it's also share all. So Sheol actually it's um guys is it a grave? Is it a grave? Yeah, uh the Bible will use uh guys there's a certain there's a certain video I I, I, I beg of you you need to watch um that series. I did a series video on it's there on YouTube. Uh it is called uh Life After Death. You cannot be a Christian, guys, and you really do not understand these things. You really need to understand this whole thing of heaven and earth and uh, and hell. You know, so there's a place down there. When I mean, where, where when you die, where are you expecting to go? That's another funny problem. You'll be you'll think god is defrauding you because now when you die you'll be expecting to go to heaven and you're gonna go and see some other things that you <laughs> not expect but that series called life after death I, I've, I've explained everything in in detail so when you die or the place of the dead underneath the earth in fact i i, I, I talk about that place in several videos underneath the earth here you know, there's a place called Shawal in Hebrew, uh, and um, the and this place uh, Jesus talks about. It's a place where when Lazarus, who was poor, died and went to there was remember Lazarus, the poor man, and who was begging at a rich man's gate. So both of them died. Lazarus went to a place called Abraham's bosom. Or I explained it in, a, in that video. It's a place we call paradise. It's also the same place as Eden. So when Eden, after Adam and Eve um, died, uh, or, I mean uh, committed that sin, God took Eden and took it down under the earth. So it's called paradise. So that's where people go when they die. And it's very important because now... Uh, You'll see when we interpret another psalm, because now when you do not know these places, you will know you are not going to understand uh, a lot of the Bible as well. So, Sheol is contained of two places, paradise and another place called a place of torment. So that place of torment is usually 
or also called hell by by us, you know. But then the problem with that place, with that word hell, when you're interpreting it in English as well, you'll find that there's a lot of places that we're just calling hell. And it, this, these places are many different places and they're not, although, so I discuss all those places uh, in, um, uh, in, 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 the, in those videos. And one of those places that is actually even called hell in the Bible, it's actually a valley, a valley of Hinnon that I discussed last time outside uh, Jerusalem when I was discussing Chronicles. That's where those guys, uh, even last time when we were discussing the prophets, that um, Ahaz, King Ahaz, used to go and sacrifice children uh, to Moloch just outside that place and uh, explain that whole place. But today I'm telling you where Shaol is. So Shaol is underneath the earth and it's divide, It's got a valley that divides a place of torment where all the wicked go and paradise or Eden where uh, all the righteous go. So in the, when Jesus Christ returns after he reigns, um, the people that are in paradise, they're going to be uh, uh, they're going to come out and meet him in the air in what we call um, uh, rapture and they'll be given new bodies you know so that Christ uh, uh, actually even promised in Revelation that we're going to eat from the fruit of Eden so Eden is going to be taken out again but the people that are in the place of torment um, they, they will remain until a uh, thousand days, a thousand years, then come judgment day. So now, Sheol is that whole place underneath the um, the earth. So what you need to know about uh, Sheol, uh, I know, you know, it's quite confusing. Uh, it's a place of torment and it, it should also be hot. Uh, we are not sure whether there's fire and whatever, you know, but... Uh, some text does suggest that there is fire, uh, but then the last place where everybody is gonna end up, uh, which is not on earth, where people are going to, uh, the unrighteous, they're going to be tormented for eternity. It's a place called the lake of fire. So hell is also going to be thrown there. The devil, the false prophet, the antichrist, uh, the demons, and all the unrighteous. They're going to be thrown into, into the lake of fire afterwards. Uh, but this place of torment, uh, so what happened is that when the Greek came into uh, when the Greek came into the scene, they had Greek gods, and one of their three big gods, uh, which are brothers, uh, it is Zeus, Hades and uh, Poseidon. So now, uh, Hades was said to be the king of, 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 of Hades. So it's a place and it's also uh, a, a person. So the Greek, if you read the New Testament as well, they will call this whole entire place Hades. So when you see that word Hades, you should know that it's speaking to Sheol. So they don't really, I don't know if the Greek have got a nice place like we do called paradise, but they just got Hades down there. So Hades, it's actually, you know, some that will have fire and everything, but it's actually a dark place. Um, it's a dark uh, uh, place uh, underneath the earth. If you excavate, you'll actually realize that there is actually like cave, like, uh, and it's going to play a role while we interpret uh, some of the um, some of the psalms here. So the Jews actually believe that Shaol is like an empty, dark place, you know. Uh, so so it is a place like that. So you, even when you when you are interpreting, uh, even when you walk through the value of a shadow of death, actually we will will go through it here. I, I took some, so you should be able to understand it. In that manner, we will go through it. So you'll be understanding that it's speaking about the place of the dead. So yes, uh, Maria, you're right. Um, the place of the dead, it's also called the grave. Uh, it's used, they use that term or the pit. So because it's a big pit. 
So it's not just like, um, you know, the fiery place that we usually imagine in our English literature. There is possibility that there is also fire because um, some scriptures suggest there is some in part of the tormenting is that it's hot because that rich man was crying, please, Father Abraham, calling Father Abraham from the other side in uh, uh, in paradise to ask Lazarus to quench his tongue uh, because he's feeling hot. So we don't know what is calling, causing the heat. But what we know is that it's going to be like a cave. Uh, and I'll show you. So the sons of Asaph, we've also discussed. Moses also wrote one psalm. Uh, and we have discussed different kinds of of psalms as well. Um, you know, so, you know, there's even prayers for, for the individuals, you know, uh, Psalm 3 to 7, which were actually written by David when he was being chased by his son Absalom. Uh, so you will be able to pray those kind of prayers when you are in a place of depression, guys, you know. Uh I know, as we discussed even last week, that, you know, most of us come from this uh, hippie, hippie Christianity and uh, hyper grace where everything is glue. It's it's all nice and um, there's nothing gloomy. It's all hippie, hippie. You can, you know, when negative things come, you just decree and declare, you bind the demons. You just, you know, but, you know, in reality and in the Bible, uh, you go through difficult times and, you know, these prayers are there for when you go through those difficult times, when you go through depressions or distress, not depression, uh, you know, which usually leads to depression if, if you don't uh, apply these sort of things, you know, because you will be feeling helpless and you know, when you don't know that there are times where you can pray and God seems not to be answering, you know. Some people live, even quit church and everything because they are not taught these things and they don't know that we have remedies, you know. Uh, you know, so when you're looking for God's saving help, they are there, you know. We even sang uh, some Psalms 121, talking about all those Psalms that when you, when you pray and you're looking up, uh, also, some 30 and 34, you can see, you know, you can ask for God's help. And there's also uh, communal, uh, corporate prayers, you know, that you pray as individuals. So it's like when we have gatherings and we have prayer groups and things, you know, these are some of the prayers that we can. So, like I said, I didn't believe that you, uh, in, in prayers that are written, uh, you know, <laughs> so. Because we, in charismatic and Pentecostal backgrounds that I come from, you, you are, they teach what we call meology, you know, self-centered stuff where you are all powerful and you are like God. They even teach us that you are, if, if a goat gives birth to a goat and a sheep gives birth to a, uh, a, a, a lamb, you know, God gives, and if we are children of God, we are also gods, we are little gods and all those funny things. So, you know, they feed your your pride and, and, and all of that. So you tend to think that you're all powerful and everything. Uh, but here you learn that, look, uh, sometimes uh, when you're going to read, like last week we're reading Psalm 22, where, where David felt like it's a worm, you know, and it's an expression that is when you're feeling helpless because, guys, we're fighting against very spiritual powerful spiritual entities that are more powerful than us and uh, I explain, explained them in one of the previous videos uh, principalities I told you guys you need to know what principalities are principalities are more powerful than the devil and all these demons and you know these are powerful uh, angels um, so you know uh, in symbolic nature, you know, uh, they're like giants when you uh, when you have to think of, of them in that way. So now, some way, you'll be going through oppression and, and all these sort of things while, while they're against you, you know. And sometimes they've got powers to even uh, fight against the God's angels, as you've seen in Daniel, uh, the Prince of Pagium, 
and the prince of Greece, you know, they had power even to fight against God's archangels and to prevent them from. So, so we are we are really against powerful beings, but we thank God for Christ, uh, as I show in those videos that Christ has has actually went to the cross and part of what he did, he rose with power and he actually took the um, authority which God had given those principalities. So now they're under him. So we don't have to fear anything anymore. And to, all we have to do is to pray. So when you're in under, when you're going through other some serious stuff, you know, it's good when you are with community uh, that understand. Uh, I go to weekly meetings uh, uh, from our church and everything, and we've got a big prayer um, uh, document. Uh, we meet uh, and we go through each and every individual and we all share our uh, our prayer request and you know we are all vulnerable to each other we share um the things that we're going through uh and we pray and guys oh you'll be shocked you know a corporate prayer is very powerful and when you're open and when you are you know because we know christ said in this world we're gonna meet a lot of trouble but when you are in those kind of churches where they when they where they preach to your uh self esteem and you know they make you more powerful than you are you don't you don't get to go through. everybody has to put on this fanatical appearance where you have to appear as everything is fine because if you don't you look like you don't have faith you look like you're not powerful you're not a child of god you don't have faith so you must even when you're sick, you must say, I'm healed <laughs> by the stripes of Jesus and, and some nonsense like, 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 like that, you know. So you, you put a facade and everything. Meanwhile, Christ said, in this world, you're going to go through a lot of things. And we see it throughout all God's children, all God's prophets were persecuted, all of the apostles, all the Christians in the beginning. Now, what made them survive, guys? It's Psalms. It's these prayers. It's this... Christ said that you must love one another. It's one of the things why I want us to to meet as well, you know, and and we share bread, and we need to get these facades, you know, and all these things. You you don't have to actually uh, be uh, be vulnerable to people that you don't know, but once you build relationships, you won't have to die in the corners. And go through things in, in by, by yourself. If you are a true child of God, you must be getting persecuted. You must be having some torment of some kind. But when you are with the other believers and in a community of believers, you understand what they are going through. And when you when you go through psalms and things like this, and when you have prayers together and you are praying all these prayers, and you know what, uh, the beautiful thing is that there is results. You know, in our in our home group, you know, guys, because we've got that list. We all all our prayers are written there, and they are sent throughout the week. And we uh, something that I've learned. Um, also, when you when you're praying the Lord's prayer, what we call the Lord's prayer, uh, our Father who art in heaven, and all that. That's a corporate prayer. I I realized that. I think last week or the week before when I was reading, like, wait a minute, this is actually not a personal prayer. It's actually Corporate prayer, it's about us, our, give us today, uh, you know, uh, lead us not into temptation. So it's, it's, it's really about us. And, and when you pray corporately, guys, God moves. And I see um, all our prayers. Now, if I can tell you all the prayers that, I, that, that I've offered to those guys, all of those prayers were answered. Because when we pray together, you know, there's something much more different. But when we have to come and put facades and we act like everything is fine and we pray for the government and the and the kids that are poor and suffering out there you know it's not true christianity in true christianity we we go through this stuff and we come together and we we join in the suffering of christ and you know and the holy spirit is among us and we, the things that destroy people out there they are not able to destroy us you know the holy spirit is the strengthener you know, uh, the comforter. People don't understand what that word comforter means. Uh, sorry, guys, I ended up even preaching. Maybe uh, someone will also will also need to hear this. But the word comforter 
you know uh even here in psalms when you're reading it you really need to understand what it means uh, again if we understood play uh, the real english we will, we will know a comforter you know uh, they will even uh explain it better a better word would be a help or uh, would be a strengthener you know uh it comes from the word fortress as well you know fortress is that stuff when 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 you are being attacked you hide uh, behind the fortress and you are, uh, you are able to your enemies are not able to destroy you so you know the holy spirit was not given when jesus was there because there wasn't any persecution and stuff and uh, the Holy Spirit was given to the church uh, and they were able to face persecution Bef before when they uh, before the Holy Spirit came the church you remember all those disciples they were cowards Jesus went to the cross by himself and uh, and yeah they were uh, they didn't have the Holy Spirit but after they had the Holy Spirit they were able to face and go through the cross uh, persecution they were just giving themselves kill me you know even Stephen the first person to be killed you know he was he died peacefully saying ah Lord forgive them oh I see the heaven he was he didn't have any in because he had the Holy Spirit now without the Holy Spirit and if you claim to have the Holy Spirit while well, you don't have we'll see it by when the persecution comes you know but the Holy Spirit is there to strengthen us and even those dark days and everything. So we'll see some of the prayers and, and, and praises as well. So, But please imagine go through facades. Imagine try to act brave and act like you've got it and you can decree and declare. You can bind demons and you can just... Faith is not... Guys, faith is not denial to deny situation and say when situation is like this and you say no i believe this it's not help no faith it's when you go into the word of god and you find what the lord has said and despite the circumstances you believe what the um, what the word of god says so there's all those sorts of of, of um so it will give you or it will give you confidence you know, so that's why you also got confessions of confidence and, you know, and guys, there's also beautiful hymns of praise, praising our majesty, because there are times where, guys, life is full of, full of seasons. So you'll have those seasons where things are tough, but you look, it's not always so. Uh, you know, seasons pass, today there's winter, to next week the summer and you know when there's those good days let's sing the hymns let's dance let's have so part of what we do also in our home group it's people who wouldn't be going some people won't be going through tough times and they've got uh nice good news you know uh people are getting married um people are, are healed uh you know people uh They've just bought uh, new houses. They are, you know, they are for their families. Uh, people just got new jobs. You know, we should be able to come in, you know, and rejoice with those that are rejoicing and cry with those that. That's what church is all about. That's what Jesus has commanded. And when you've got these psalms, you've got enough, you know, um, to help us to see how do we go about with these things. You know, uh, the hymns of celebrating God's universal reign, you know, how powerful God is. And, you know, remember the Bible is all about, uh, we said that when we're reading the Bible, guys, uh, what are we trying to look for? What's the purpose of the Bible? When we want to interpret the Bible, every time when we're reading the Bible, what are we looking for? What is the Bible written for? We are looking for Christ and the kingdom of God. Yes. We are looking for Christ. You know, Jesus said that the scriptures are all about him. So whatever we're reading, let us find Christ in it. You know, and let us learn about the kingdom of God. And the kingdom is because this king, our God is a king, guys. We come from a democracy. We are in a very bad disadvantage. You know, uh, and if we don't learn this stuff, that's why we'll end up in these hyper graces and everything and calling God our friend. I'm a friend of God. You'll be singing those <laughs> songs. I'm a friend of God. He calls me friend. He never called me friend, guys. That's why people don't even fear God, you know. Um, and uh, 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 God is king. He wants you to be afraid of him. We have read through the other books. 
uh, before we go to Psalms, and God is showing Himself. He will even do. Uh, uh, <laughs> he will even ban people, and you know that's where the phrase is: um, consuming fire. God is a consuming fire. His own children, you know, because He said, "Look here in this tabernacle, only these people who are consecrated can come." You know, uh, and He put the Levites around that all these other children of God, if they try to approach. He must kill them, you know, and he says he's a consuming fire because he wants people to, to to actually fear him, you know. He wants people both to see him as a father and also to be afraid of him. Don't get used to God, you know, don't play around God. Uh, he's holy. We have also went to discuss in the book of Leve Le uh, Le uh, Leviticus that God is actually uh, holy, and holy means he's separate and every and, and, and all of that. We discuss all of that. So, you know, we still need to keep him holy, and we still need to see him as God and as king. So people from kingdoms and people who have at least lived under the chiefs will understand these things. So you need to celebrate God. You need to praise him as a king and do all those things that Africans we used to do for our king. So we need to learn those things. We need to get out of this democratic mindset. Because where we are, we, it's a kingdom, and where we're going, it's in the kingdom. So we must learn these things. And now David is a good king uh, that, that was uh, uh, a type of Christ to teach us how we are to behave when Christ comes back here. Christ is not coming back as that lamp that you, you're thinking is not coming to take us to heaven and, and in some funny, nice houses and things. There are no houses in heaven. You know, Christ is coming back here as a king to rule. And if you are not prepared for, for his kingdom, you're going to suffer because Revelation tells us that he's going to rule here with us and uh and with the with the with the with the rod uh with the rod iron. So it's you know, he's coming coming back for dictatorship. It's a kingdom. You know, there won't be any democracy. So now if you're not used to worshipping the king and when you see him and praising him and when you approach him bringing offerings and everything you know you don't just approach the king and this is why people can just go to church without offerings without anything you know just because we are not under the law and we don't have to pay tithes and everything doesn't mean that you have to go to before god empty-handed and even if you don't have to give it to uh, just the church you can give it to the poor you know have something remember that god will the bible in psalms actually it says that when you're giving to the poor you're giving to god you need to honor god you know uh, even whether people deserve it or not, sometimes you know, I do it as unto unto God. You know, when you see someone lacking, also 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 give as unto because that's what we do in God's kingdom. You must honor God. You know, so there's all those royal psalms, and if you don't learn them, you saw even in Revelation, we are going to sing psalms <laughs> in the kingdom of God forever. That's what we've been. You know, there's, there won't be any mansions and things for you to lie down all day. We'll be working, guys. Uh, remove this Greek mentality that the white people have brought us here. Uh, you know, uh, the Greeks and their gods. Uh, and they believe that, they believe in what we call aristocracy. You know, where uh, 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 a person who's blessed by the gods is seen by sitting down and going to theaters and stuff, and people who are, who are cursed, who are not loved by the gods, that the ones who do handiwork and they are dark-skinned because they work under the sun and and all of those uh, mumbo-jumbo of white people. But in God's kingdom, you'll see it throughout, through King David, through Jesus, through everyone. God, everybody, they are we're laborers. We work with hands, and that's what we're going to be doing even in God's kingdom. And we're going we're gonna to be worshiping God. We're going to love God. We're going to enjoy. There will be peace. We'll be happy. People think that uh, when they don't work, that's when life is nice, you know, and they're looking forward to retirement. In God's kingdom, there's no such nonsense as retirement. Uh, and I've seen people immediately when they retire, and they think that we're going to be traveling the world and doing that. They just die. They just become old and useless and everything because that's not how God created people. We've bought it into the lot of lies from the Greeks who also brought us this democracy. So we need to unlearn and learn stuff about God's kingdom and learn these royal psalms and sing the songs and, you know, there's all of these uh, different kinds of psalms. So, you know, and this appeals to God, as I've told you, you know, you know, sometimes you, you go to God, 
you know, don't see God as just, uh, no, he's our father, and he's a, but he's king, guys. You know, God, they, when you're saying, oh, Lord, you know, it's it's because, remember when we're saying, when we see the word Lord in capital letters, what does it mean in the Bible? They said it's different from God. There's God and there's Lord. Lord in capital letters, what does it mean? Uh, we actually talked about it last week as well. Um, I don't see people's names, but uh, Mulemba. Every time when you're reading the Bible and you see the word Lord, what does it what what does it mean in capital letters? Oh, sorry. It's referring. Um, it's referring to God. It's it means. It's referring. No, it's not God. Ah. Uh, that's why you see the word God. So when you see the word God uh, in Hebrew, what is the word that is used in Hebrew? And when you see the word Lord, what is the Lord? What is what? What are they interpreting? Which word are they interpreting from Hebrew when they say Lord? There's two different words. That the the yeah yes. So when you see the word Lord, it's actually His name. I don't know why why the why the the English decided to use the <laughs> Lord, but it's actually Yahweh. So, but then when you see the word G O D in the Bible. And referring to our God, it's actually Elohim, you know. And I've explained that Elohim it means it actually means gods. Uh, it's a plural world, and it's, it's the Trinity God, and it's also uh, it can be any god, any spiritual being. Uh, angels are also go are also Elohim, you know, or any powerful spirit. So it's not a specific person, uh, but although you can refer to God as an Elohim. Um, you know, but when you want to, when, 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 when you call his name, um, you know, as Yahweh, you know, it's a personalized name because you've got a relationship with him. So it's, it's more of a relation, uh, a relational name. So, you know, it's, um, so please keep that in mind all the time, time. So it's your deliverer when you're addressing God and you can do appeals, you know, Save me, help me, sorry, answer. Sorry, Come again. Sorry, can you just repeat that? So you saying, Lord, L O R D, rather capital. Yeah, in capital letters. It's because they're interpreting okay. Yahweh, and Yahweh it's written in caps, and they they don't have vowels, so they will write uh, Y W H. So the, the the Hebrew are afraid of of saying. God's name, uh, you can't make any Hebrew say God's name. So, uh, but it is made up to be Yahweh when people put up uh, what those um, letters could mean, or in shortcut it would be Yah. So it is His name. But then when you see God, or uh, referring to to Him as God, the actual word in Hebrew that is used is Elohim, and Elohim. Elohim is not specifically used only for our God. You can use it for any other God, you know. Uh, and it's actually a plural word. It means gods, and even angels. They are also. You remember when 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 the scripture said that He has made us. A, uh, what is a man that you can be mindful of, you know? And He's also you have made him a little lower than Elohim. That's is that's what. Um, that's the, that's what is used there. If you used him, you made him a little lower than Elohim. So English translations they will say you have made him a little lower than God. Some will say little lower than angels. Uh, you know, so they are all not wrong because the word used there is Elohim. Uh, and also judges and kings of the world as well. Sometimes they are, you know, they can be also be elevated to Elohim's. Uh, uh, and other spiritual beings, demons, fallen angels, angels, and whatever, they can also be called Elohim, you know. So, but uh, our God, our Elohim, the highest Elohim, the highest Elohim of all, it's Yahweh. 
uh, is our personalized God, uh, who is God the Father, God the Holy Spirit, and God um, the Son, who is Christ. Uh, do you understand it now? Yes. Uh, yes. Hi, Oscar. Hi, John. Yeah, very interesting uh, discussion there, I think um, this is this is another interesting topic that maybe uh, you know we can set some time outside of the normal program, you know, to go through this topic of Elohim because um, it, it's it's much more interesting, you know, to to understand, especially the part about relation. With God, yes. the name Yahweh, and uh, yes, and 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 when we say Elohim, you know, what what is the Bible saying, you know, and it, 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 it's very interesting. So, if we can have a session you know, outside of the normal schedule, yeah, uh, we can discuss that even on even on WhatsApp as well because it's a very interesting thing indeed. I also years ago I didn't know, and it it helps you when you're reading the. When we when you're reading the Bible, you know, and you seeing these things, you know, and yeah, uh, because other pagan nations they didn't have uh, a relationship that relationship that uh, God's children had, you know, uh, and this is why we can call him Father and why God did not only take the Jews to be their king, you know, uh, he also became um, Yahweh. You know, their God, their salvation, uh, 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 and he became their, he was like their father, their mother as well. The book of Hosea, we shall see it when you get there, he, you know, he, it's also um, written to represent him as the husband, you know. So it's all these symbolic things that relate, um, that represent close relationship and, um and this is why you know you are you should both be afraid of him as an Elohim, but also revere him or uh, as Yahweh, as your as, as as your relational God who has chosen you from all of these people. He's the God of all. He's the Elohim of all nations and all the universe. But he's a Yahweh for only his children. So you know because. He's got that relationship with them. So, yeah, it's quite interesting. So now, you know, you also got distress. I want, you know, you know, I don't know why. Maybe it's because I'm also going through seasons of, um, of, of persecution and distress. So, you know, you, 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 <laughs> you will forgive me why the Psalms are also, uh, very quite interesting for me, and I'm also maybe more talking about uh, the bad sides than the praising and happy sides. Um, you know, I've also written some, um, you know, uh, as a musician as well. Uh, but they are very helpful, man. You know, you, <laughs> you know, if there's a weapon that you go through nonsense and you don't feel anything, you know, uh, People wonder how are you surviving these things? How why do you go through all these sums? You know, so you know, and you need to be open with 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 God. You know, many are raising against me. You know, the weight can attack me. I am in this. You know, pray to God these things. Pray these sums to God. They are prayers. You know, and uh, when people rise against you guys, hey, this time where. You know, John will know. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, uh, when I was working uh, with him, uh, hey, there was a time also. Uh, yeah, people were rising against me uh, at work, and people wouldn't understand. Some coworkers will come to me as well and be like, "Why do you allow them to talk to you like this? Why are they doing this thing to you?" Why? You know, and these are people in powerful positions, way up. <laughs> it's like why did they, they, they're not even supposed to be talking to me, but people just come from, you know, up there, and they were just coming to attack, and they don't like you, and you know, and as a spiritual person, I knew what was happening. You know, people people are involved in serious occultic stuff, you know, uh, and I nearly even mentioned their ethnicity, but certain group of people as well, they are. 
you know, you, you just see them, they're CEOs, they're what, what, you do not know what, what those people are, then what they're involved in, you know, how did they get even up there. And the problem with us children of God, when we are there uh, in our workplaces, we are actually, um, uh, we actually with angels and we are with the glory of God and these people, they're not able to operate. You know, they have to hate us like, um, yeah, like when, um, uh, like how Daniel was hated uh, by the wicked people in powerful places, and uh, also what was Esther's cousin again, or uh, Mordecai in English, you know. Uh, so like Mordecai, uh, Hadassah's cousin. So you know, but God and what Daniel was doing and Mordecai, they pray, guys. You know, when people are persecuting and they're saying all these things, we, the wicked, they're attacking you, they're rising against you. David went through the same thing. They will say all these sort of things. They will attack him. And, you know, uh, you sing this stuff. You pray this stuff. Daniel was praying day and night, Mordecai day and night, and they will, they will try to, you know, uh, Maria, I know you also got uh, testimonies around these kind of things. People at workplaces i'm sure all of you must have went through those sort of things you know and they will really do stuff but god like he did with with hen and uh for mordecai and also with those that were that got daniel to be thrown in the uh den of lions you know he they uses there as those traps to uh to attack those people and that's why you need to, you need to, when you're praying, there's those prayers where you say, God, snatch uh, the teeth of, of my enemies. Be realistic, you know, and God will do it, you know, and, uh, and he, he does that. God does not change from, from, from Genesis to Revelation in the future, you know, it, it does not change. I know you, you know, we've already discussed that last week, so... You'll come at your aid, and those traps that are set uh, against you, and those the witchcraft, because they will try to be witch. I mean, everyone will be under their spell. At the workplaces, you know, everybody getting, because the people will be getting up the ladder through wicked means, witchcraft, taking muti from sangomas and stuff, all this sort of wickedness. But when you're there, you are disturbing them, you know, and they are sangomas, and they are. Their zombies will tell them that it is you. They need to get rid of you. So they'll try, they'll come and get the bosses and whatever to. So you need to be able to pray these things against the wicked. You know. Uh, and sometimes, guys, you know, you have to be honest like Job as well, as I've discussed last week. You know, God is sovereign. One thing we never understand as, as charismatics especially and is that God is sovereign. We know we only know God as love and what what but God is sovereign. Everything is under him, under his control. His kingdom is under his control. Uh, we're learning about Daniel today at, at church. We're reading the book of we're going through the, the book of Daniel. And with you guys, those who came first in twenty twenty, we went through the book of Daniel and Revelation. And in Revelation we've also studied um Revelation chapter 4 and 5, where God is king and is sovereign. And sovereign means that, you know, uh, he does what he wants when he wants. He's a dictator. Uh, dictator is not a tyrant, guys, as we, many of us usually. Dictator is someone with absolute power uh, and he makes all the rules. So he, he makes all the rules and the laws. Also, for the devil, we have seen it. I don't need to go through it with you guys. We have seen it in the book of Kings as well. You know, that even the demons and even the book of Job, the devil and everyone answer to God. So God has got absolute control. So everything that is happening, he has allowed it. You know, so you don't, some, some things, you don't, you don't just bother even with the devil and stuff. Some things, you know, you have to go to God and say, Lord, why have you forsaken me? Why are you allowing this? Why are you, you know, why, if, why have you, why are you turning your face again? Why, why have you, why are you not answering me? Why are you not dealing with this thing? Because he's got all the power, guys. Why have you allowed this? You know, some things you understand 
in the future some sometimes god does not answer immediately like with job but he will answer you and you understand even in the future you know so you know you have to complain against god as well guys you must be realistic you know uh you know so please god petition be not far from me you know and and yeah use all of those things now this is one of my favorite things to do as well to motivate god to hear me and to answer me you know remember god is king guys we have said that word um uruva in 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 Chivenda, you know because i couldn't find the proper english word to to explain what prayer is you know prayer in english does not sound very you can't find the supplications i don't know pleadings we have used those kind of words to describe it but you know you're pleading it motivate motivate you know in in court when you're when you're pleading and you're when you're praying to to the judge who has got all the power and you are just a worm you motivate to say lord look 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 you know uh and if it pleases my lord you know this is my prayer and you know if it pleases the court this is what i'm i'm praying for that you come to my aid and restore uh, what i've lost and the damage that has been caused you know you don't go there as if you deserve <laughs> you deserve to have um someone smashed your car then you deserve to have it paid or someone has stolen something you it, you know you pray you know you pray that you know uh, for a new car or for you bring the the, the 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 letter showing how much it costs to 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 repair your 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 windows and the distress that this caused you then uh you couldn't go to work and it 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 could you lost this much so you pray you know uh my lord if you if you may just please you know and you bring all of these other things to you know to bring um to restore you back you know so you, you need to please you know and sometimes when you're saying all these things my lord and my if it pleases the court you know you you are massaging the <laughs> the, for the lack of better words because we don't understand that word ego but it is the actual good word um you massage the ego of the one in 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 power you know god is king massage his ego you know uh i take refuge in you you know for your name's sake and this one here for your name's sake hey it works guys me most of the prayers when i'm looking for something and i want something from from god or to come to my aid i don't go in need as if I deserve it because we we've got I'm your child and what what not. Look, we are sinners, even though we are children of God. You know, uh, we deserve to go to hell. We deserve to be punished. You know, it's all by God's mercy and His His thing is with everything that we have. You know, but some some of the stuff I will go and say, look, what people, what will people say? You know, your name it's on the line. You know, uh, people know me as 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 this person, and I represent your kingdom. And you know, there's a lot of charlatans out there, and this is the all. You know, people I can see that I'm I'm, I'm representing your light in here. And if you allow this to happen, what are people gonna? Moses used the same trick. <laughs> Sorry, not the trick. Use the same um uh, uh, method to God, because God was ready to get rid of all the Jew, all all the children of Israel. When they were worshiping uh, those pagan gods, after he just took them out from from Egypt in the wilderness, and they are back to worshiping the nonsense, and God was like, you know what? I'm wiping all this uh, this this people. Uh, and Moses went like, what will people say? You are the great God. You have rem- taken them out from from Egypt, and your your people are praising your name. They are afraid of you out there, and now you you do this. What are people going to say? And God repented. That's the word the Bible used, you know. <laughs> Moses used that against his, because, you know, for your name's sake, save them, not for them. They don't deserve it. <laughs> and you are able to, you know, you're speaking to a king, guys. You need to know how to address kings. As we're used to democracy, where we, we, we toy toy and we think we've got rights and, hey, do this, we are, and you pressurize. No, you, you don't pray, you beg here. Yeah. Yes, that's that word I'm looking for. You beg and you you plead. So, guys, let's know the kingdom of God. Let us not be like them who are lost and uh, they're claiming to be Christians, you know. Uh, so, again, there it is. 
when you've got your enemies, guys, accuse them before God, you know, uh, and tell the what is truth. Don't, 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 don't. I know you, you only know to love your enemies. Yes, there's part for that. And most of the time, the Holy Spirit will lead you. He has led me a lot of times, you know, and one of the important times when I'm in, when I'm back in this place where I'm, where I'm at, I remember uh, the two people who actually uh, were accusing me falsely and they've tarnished my name so much, you know, uh, and now I've lost um, even the followers and the credibility in some church. Um, yeah. And I remember one day when I was waking up to pray and God, the Holy Spirit made me pray for them. At first, my head was not understanding and I just prayed for them. And I prayed a blessing over them, you know, uh, and some other people as well. Uh, they did not, I could see that they're struggling to conceive and it's been many years, they couldn't have children. I prayed for them. I nearly even went and told them, but, you know, uh, it wouldn't have been right. I just sat and I observed and they conceived immediately. And now they've got a child. But I look from far. You know, sometimes uh, it's, it's, people will know, you know, and, uh, you know, you rejoice with your enemies. You pray for enemies. You bless for, you know, you pray for those who persecute you. You know, there is a place for that, you know. But most of the time, the Holy Spirit will lead you and he will give you the strength. You don't have to be a hypocrite. You don't have to fake you know, in Psalms, um, it's it's literature. It's you have to be creative. You have to communicate your emotion and express how you're feeling. You know, uh, if they are accusing you, go and say, Lord, these people, there's no truth in their mouth. You know, they're seeking my life. They're trying to destroy me. All this stuff, say for them. You know, I've already spoken about the judicial rituals, and you know, when you're innocent, this one has <laughs> mentioned it. I've I've walked in integrity. You know. Uh, you know, Job was not in the wrong. It's not, it's not self. Um, what did self righteousness? If you have, if you have even done any wrong, you haven't done any wrong. Confession of sins. I have sinned against you. I confess my iniquity. You know, um, uh, confess, guys. It's a king. You know, you, that's the only way. Don't don't go without confessing your sins and being because <laughs> you'll be shocked that uh, you know. Don't think. That stuff where we are taught in hyper grace that your past, present, and future sins are forgiven. Some nonsense that I'm not, I don't even want to go into. I will spend a long time, you know. And but praise God, trust in God. You you know you are my shield. You are my answer. You are my deliverer. You are my refuge. You know these praises. At the end of the day, no matter how much complaints, no matter how much uh, lamentation and cries and these things, at the end, guys, always make sure. You praise the Lord, because when you're praising the Lord, you are also showing faith, or be, or, or at least uh, promise Him that you will praise Him when He does those things. Have a little bit of hope, because that's without faith you cannot please God. You know, uh, yes, there it is. Even at the end, you know, vow to praise the Lord at the end. You know, promise Him if you're feeling like you're not praising Him now. It's okay. Don't, 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 don't fake. Don't do the lip service. They praise me, they will worship me with their lips, but where their hearts are far from him. Don't be like those hypocrites. You know, uh, but, yeah, you know, uh, some other stuff now I'm going to have to leave. So these ones we discussed la last week. You know, the Lord is my rock and my fortress. We went more into details about it, and I've showed you even the Masada and all of those and you know the rock i mean i mean god is not this rock you know it's not the masada it's not the that fortress you know it was it is symbolic in nature so this is why you know guys when you're doing poems and when you're doing psalms you must understand that it's poetic so if i'm saying the lord is my rock um you know what type of um of symbol is that what what type of figure of speech is that remember it it is it it is uh it is poetic it's, it's the part that i didn't discuss more last week you know uh, psalms are very poetic in nature people come and they 
<laughs> when you're reading Psalms, they will check them literally. They are poetic. They are also uh, 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 prophetic, as I will show, as I've shown you last week, and I'll also show you today. Uh, and you know, uh, po poetry, guys, it's it's literature that evokes uh, a concentrated, imaginative. You must understand it's imaginative. It's not something literal that you're saying. So when I'm saying my rock or my whatever, I'm not speaking about literal rock. It's symbolic. You know, but it's symbolic from from this from the actual rock, and then it's speaking about God. How is God a rock? A rock is hard. It's it's strong. You cannot destroy it. And it's if you see that Masada, it's huge. It's big. You know, so you are able to see when we use these colorful terms. You know, uh, they speak. You know, emotionally, you are able to understand that experience that you are going through and what that the writer was going through, and it it speaks to your emotion, the, the very same emotion that you're going through. So whatever psalm you're reading and what you're going through, you know, it speaks to it, and you you get the response. You know, and it is. You know, it uses very interesting language and, um, you, you know, sometimes it's the sounds of the words, you know, the way, the way you, the, the words are laid and, you know, and sometimes in like, like in our African poetry, we use a, a rhythm a lot. You see, it's, it's the sounds, it's the rhythm, it's like, you know, sometimes it's not just, it's, 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 it, you know, it gives some certain meaning and it evokes some certain uh, uh, emotional response to it, you know, uh, and and you know, us as musicians, you know, we enjoy it, we 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 we, we understand it even much more better. But everybody, when you're using colorful language, they are able to. And I mean, women, I mean, it's 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 your world. You all women should just be uh, poets, and you know that's why women music as well. And I'm also going to show you, maybe if I have it here, you know, that music and poetry and, uh, 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 and, and, um, and prophecy, they go together. That's why, you know, um, uh, 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 women can be more spiritual and they can, they can actually easily, and even naturally, even those, I used to wonder, you know, even people that are not born again, women can actually, for some reason, they can, they can, uh, they're spiritually inclined. You know, uh, and uh, uh, scientifically, when 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 they check uh, the way our brains are designed, uh, they are different. The bigger side of 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 of, of the women's brain, it's creative, it's colorful, it's everything. So that's why women, you'll find, uh, you know, sometimes they don't like. You'll correct me, ladies, if I'm wrong. Sometimes, um. You know, you want to hear all these colorful things, you know, not necessarily true, literally, but what you are, con what you're conveying, uh, you know, it, it is emotionally appealing. It's giving a, a certain message and, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, that is why, you know, when you, when you, when you look, <laughs> we'll see it even in Proverbs, um, like, uh, the the line which says um, the power of life and death it's in the tongue. What does that mean, guys? Hey, I'm stealing something from Proverbs today. No, let me leave it because it's gonna be an interesting thing when we get when we get them. You know, um, of course, in uh, in charismatics we've got it completely wrong. And we thought it's we're using it like new age people who speak words to things and <laughs> and say and call it faith and we're thinking once we speak things and then things can things can um, it's not what it means but I'm tempted because I'm going to use that metaphor which we use as well which I'll give an example of you know when you're speaking to women and stuff but anyway um, it is what it is uh, but it's we use poetry uses all these um uh colorful languages and we also use because we don't usually use literal words meaning literal things it's colorful language we've got figures of speech do you remember figures of speech from your high school um what what different kinds of figures of speech do we have
uh, the figures of speech that you use in poetry and even in music, we use it a lot. Uh, hyperbole. Yes. You just mentioned metaphor, Oscar, and mm -hmm. similes. Yes, Me metaphors and similes. Okay, what, what is an hyperbole, first of all? It's like, uh, as it is, hyping, like uh, you are exaggerating. Exaggeration. Exaggerate yes. something, yeah. Yes, you know. Uh, give an example of, of, of a hyperbole. It's it's <laughs> there's like your oh, hyperbole is it's one thing that we it was as big as an elephant. Yes, yes, thank you. You know, big as an elephant. It's both a hyperbole and it's also uh, a simile. So similes and metaphors they are they are nearly uh, the same, but a simile actually uses the word as and like. You see, big like an elephant. It's not supposed to be like though in proper english um yeah yes it, it is actually uh, like it's used for nouns and s it's used uh, for verbs so you say it's big like an elephant you know uh yeah so that that's a good one so it's an exaggeration and it's also uh uh a simile so it gives that thing so you get that thing but you're not saying you know He's like an elephant, and he's, he can't be really that big, you know. So, yeah, well done. So, we've got similes, we've got metaphors, we've got hyperboles. Uh, we've got so many. So, we've got irony, you know, one of my favorite ones. When, when, when I write, uh, oh, where are the other ones? Okay, they're not showing up. So, we've got all of those. And one of my favorite ones, when I write uh, in my books, I, I, how I capture audiences. You know, I use a lot of ironies. Uh, you know, uh, I use also sarcasm. Um, sarcasm is one of my favorites. So in sarcasm uh, and ironies, it's you contrast things. You know, you 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 say this meaning that um, uh, you ridicule something by saying the opposite of what it means. Um, uh, and in similes and in songs, we use a lot of those uh, in rap music. And in rap music as well, rap rap means rhythm and poetry. So, you know, you use rim, uh, rhymes, you know, words that uh, end up um, nice, rice, uh, ice, you know, things like that. It's nicely uh, colorful and, and rhyming words. Uh, so you use uh, all of that. Uh, um what is that one again that means um uh that contrast words um yeah so 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 there's a lot of those and, and in fact so when you you'll see it also in psalms you know so if, if you read uh, for instance psalm 139 if i ascend to heaven you are there if i make my bed in sheol you are there i mean what Oh, this is David. Uh, if David is writing this, or whoever is writing this, um, what what sort of figure of speech is here already? If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the outermost parts of the sea, I mean, I mean, li listen to that nice, colorful word, wording. What what sort of figure of speech do you already see here? Uh, it, but remember again. Uh, by the way, uh, the the Hebrew they don't use um, they don't use much more of um, our kind of poetry. You know, theirs it's also much more of uh, the ideas, grouping of ideas, and um, uh, but they use a lot of 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 similes and metaphors as well. They also use hyperbole. So. I'll say there's a there's a hyperbole here. Why would they why why would I say it's a hyperbole in the first uh, line?
why is it a hyperbole guys come on we just described what a hyperbole is but hyperbole is an exaggeration right so why is that an exaggeration that first line um, how, how would he ascend to heaven yes I mean, come on, guys. <laughs> Nobody can say just say, ah, let me, I'm ascending to heaven. Ah, okay, now I'm, I'm going to hell. Who does that? <laughs> I mean, come on, guys. You know, nobody, do you, you can't. You don't have that power, you know. And besides, now you're even acting like God because in Ephesians, you'll even read, I mean, even throughout Scripture, that nobody has ever ascended to heaven. It's only Christ. It's only God, you know, and the angels, of course. I mean, you ascend to heaven and you, you know, I mean, you, you you are not God. You know, what do you mean if I ascend to heaven? You can't ascend to heaven. You can't ascend to heaven to, to, to show up. You know, um, you know, but it's, 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 it, it makes sense because he's trying to say, where can I run from your spirit, O oh Lord? The way God is so powerful, the way God is everywhere. If you go to the highest, the last end of the world, uh, of, 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 of the universe which is heaven there he is now if I go to the lowest the end of the universe in Shawol down there in the darkest there he is so there's no way it's, not, it's giving you a, a picture of saying look this God it's what, what people will translate as omnipresent he's everywhere there's no way to, I mean so you know he's, 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 he's everywhere this is he's you know, it's so you get even the big picture that emotionally you understand. So if if you are a sinner uh, and he's speaking about Tori, look, uh, uh, let let me say you have actually uh, committed a crime against someone who's looking for you, and I say. Even if you run to heaven, there he is. Even if you run to, to hell. So there's no way. You, you are communicating that feeling that, look, you are helpless. You Whatever crime you've done, just go to this person. You know, he's going to kill you or he's going to, you know, don't waste your time. So if you're speaking about good, uh, like maybe even in this case that God is so good. Uh, that, look, even if you try uh, to go even to share all, maybe... Uh, even in a place where, look, you have chosen to to go into, it's a place of, of death, it's a place of, uh, it's a wicked place. If, if I choose to go and prostitute myself, uh, if I choose to go and um, do some sinful thing, uh, drink and do drugs, and I'm, I mean, the thing is, God is still there. I can still pray to God when I'm there. You know, and God will still hear me. It doesn't matter where you are. You know, even if I'm in some high place and I think I'm king and whatever, and, you know, God does not say, you know, I'm only for the poor or the, the, the you know, God can still hear me. So you are able to get this big picture of, you know, uh, how big God is, you know. So by using this sort of poetry, anybody, any human being, so this is why even the world, they will, they will appreciate um, Psalms because it speaks to the emotions and every person, every human being can hear that language of emotion. You know, so I've already told you that uh, we're using a hyperbole then. You know, even though I walk through the value of a shadow of death, now we no longer have time. I will fear no evil, uh, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff is there to comfort me. What sort of um, figures of speeches do you see here again? Uh, because of time. You can see here. Uh, now, remember what Psalm 23 is, guys. We said they are grouped, and it goes with Psalm 22 and Psalm 24. What are these Psalms about? 22, 23, and 24. We discussed them last week. What are these Psalms about? And I said, I mean, you can't interpret Psalm 23 if you really don't understand 22 and 24. Does anybody remember? 
and they about the crucifixion of Jesus and uh, uh, what happened on the third day. Why am I? I just got a mental block. <laughs> no, you are you are um, you are in the right. So when you when you're going to read these psalms, guys, um, uh, because of time, some things I'm, I, I won't be able to cover, but I've already said some some stuff last week. David, it's important. We said David is important. Why? Because he is a type of a Messiah. He's a type of Christ. And the Psalms are in their nature as well prophetic. So David, they are telling us about David. David is writing these things, feeling whatever he's feeling. But because it's also the Holy Spirit writing, they are also prophesying about the Messiah. And the same thing that David is going through is the same thing that Christ went through and is going through. You know, so now David, a shepherd boy, you know, he's writing in 22. You, we have shown you last week that some of the stuff that, are, that he wrote there, it could only be the Holy Spirit and speaking about, about Christ. So he went from being a, a shepherd boy who was hated uh, by King Saul and he was trying to save King Saul and King Saul chased him. Uh, and you tried to kill him, and he went into that place in the in the caves, and he was hiding. Uh, and you know, and he went through, and he was writing these psalms when he was he was he, when he went through those places. And after that, after being going through this stuff in twenty four, you know, you know, he's seeing himself as that big great king. And David did go and become a big. The greatest king, uh, per perhaps to have ever lived, you know, and uh, and that's the same thing that Christ went through. He went through as a suffering servant, and nobody persecuted by by the kings and the heralds and everyone, you know. And he went to the to the cross, and we even said he even said that Eloi, Eloi, Lama That's Hebrew stuff, which was quoting the Psalms because he must have been uh, reading the Psalms. Uh, you, you must have been uh, uh, reciting the Psalms when he was going through that stuff. But as we know, Scripture tells us now he is king. He was raised and he was given uh, all authority to be king of kings, king of all the universe, above all the principalities and above all the... the everyone has been given that power. Now he's the king of kings. But he had to go through all of this stuff. Same thing that uh, David went through. So now... Jesus quoting Psalms going through all of that stuff was very important. You know, uh, we've shown you uh, why those things are important. If Christ himself does not pray direct prayers or whatever he's feeling on that, he's praying the Psalms. I mean, he's quoting. The, that's why you, even as when you're going through stuff, we can pray these things. So, so you know, now a value of a shadow of death. You know, uh, you know this. This this is some some interesting um things because now, uh, because time has already left me. I'm gonna try to be very quickly, uh, saying that David, you know, it must have went through his head when he was going through those caves and those things when he was going through, all, and his death is actually guaranteed. You are being chased by a king. You're just a boy here, and a king with an army. You know, how you survive that, it can only be the Lord. And he's, this guy knows he has been a shepherd, you know. So he knows that it must have been God who was guiding him by his staff and, and, and his rod like he used to do with the, with the sheep. And when lions and bears will come against him, that shepherd will do what? Will kill those lions. He has done it himself. He told that to Goliath. So... So, so, so you can see that now he's seeing himself going through those caves in the dark, in that valley of shadow of death. I've actually taken some pictures in the in the in the internet and courtesy of 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 those guys that they've drawn that picture. So this is the valley, and look how dark and gloomy it is. And you know, you're trying to find hope, you know, in that masada that he has went through as well. In those caves, it's dark. Your, your death is guaranteed, and that value of shadow of death is really guaranteeing how, how much not only just the area itself, how how it looks. It's the death 
that he was going through uh thinking about Saul and the and the and the and the, and the powerful um armies that look you are just a little boy you you are a nobody you have got no mate your death is guaranteed you are going death is guaranteed and this is exactly what Jesus has went through as well in that garden of Gethsemane can you see how gloomy that garden was you know, David is a type of Christ. He's praying exactly what Christ was praying and what he was going through. He knew he's yet for death, you know. And that's why even when Peter tries to cut the ear of the thing, he said, look, he, he, he has to go to, he has to, and he's, he sweat even blood, guys, because he was afraid, you know. Don't let anyone fool you, you know. Christ was afraid. He sweat blood. That's how, that's how deep, I mean, <laughs> that's how deep and how, you know, when, and, and, and he must have, we don't know what he prayed at the Garden of Gethsemane, but I, I believe he prayed this sort of, of of prayers, you know. I believe he prayed also uh, Psalm 23 because it's, it's in that same thing that he's going through and 22 is even showing us the very same thing that happened when he was on the cross and how they gambled for his garments and the wicked people and he's afraid he's sweating and he's and he's being and his friends they've they've they're sleeping in this darkest hour you know this is the kind of things when you're alone as well and this this is the only thing guys when you're reading these um psalms or, or writings Unlike where, where you can just go somewhere and take a scripture about David and Goliath and you make yourself David and Goliath, you make them, they are not written for that. But these ones here, they are written for that. You are able to take these situations. Christ says that, you know what, he has been, he, he, he emphasizes what we've got a high priest with, who empathizes with us because he has been through what we've been through. So you are able to take those emotions, pray that Psalm 23, all those Psalms. When you're going through that, through that valley of a shadow of a death, and when, 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 when you're sweating and you whatever, and you, 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 your destruction, it's almost, it's, it's like guaranteed. You are praying that, and you are hoping on God, and you're putting yourself in, you know. So this is what Christ was, you know, uh, putting his uh, himself into into the hands of God that is the shepherd, and you know what he'll, he knows that even after this, he's going down to share all. You know, now share all, share all. I didn't, I, sh I should have, I, I won't have time even to, to bring the videos. You know, I've also taken videos from, even from mythologies, because they actually had very good uh, picture, although their beliefs, it's funny beliefs, but they've got a picture of, um, if, if you guys, you can go and watch uh, Gods of, of Egypt, and also if you watch Greek mythologies of like Clash of the Titans and stuff, they've got Hades down there, they even got cartoons and thingies, it's good to know all these pagan thingies, but uh, you know, they've got uh, down there in, 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 in a place we call Shawol, or that we've already described, you know, uh, there's no sky like this, there's no, uh, there's nothing, it's, it's, it's all it's all, um, it's like a cave, you know, but it's a very gloomy and dark cave. And you are there, you're like a little person and, you know, it's scary and you don't know what it's to come there, you know. And, of course, in their mythologies, they've got all these funny creatures, scary creatures, you know. And another thing that I, literature that I, that I, that I also, uh, Dante's Inferno, you know, uh, it's, more Roman Catholic and whatever, but it this guy dies and he goes down, uh, into 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 different places down in hell, chasing to try and and save his uh his beloved uh, from the devil and stuff. You know, it's quite an interesting thing. Is but the way the underworld is described, you know, it, it's a very gloomy place. So when you're going through that, you know, it's like a shadow of. You know, same place where that rich man was, a place of torment, and you know, it's all gloomy. But imagine you being the one being thrown there, and you are, you are, you are, you are, you are God's child, you know. So the Holy Spirit was able to raise Christ. That's why some people believe that Christ went to hell, although it might not be very accurate, but he did, he did go into this place um, underground, but he knew that God is going to raise him. So after going through this, when you're praying this sound of prayers, when you're going through uh, some very difficult time and you know the Lord is there, is your shepherd, uh, 
is going to defeat your enemies you know even though they will kill you and but somehow you are going to rise you know you don't have to fear them who can only kill the flesh you don't have, it's temporary guys seasons will come and they will pass somehow you'll rise up in Psalm 24 being a king uh and you know some some sums like this oh guys um i don't know what time it is on the actual clocks but it's mine is showing me 10 past oh how long can you give me to just try maybe to complete whatever last things we have hello remember we started in um we started 30 minutes late how long are you willing to give to complete and whoever as well uh, we can also uh, allow people to uh, who have to leave uh, because of the time to do so so that how, how long can you give me guys so that i don't go i don't go past that uh, I see Maureen, Maureen Bant, Lanza, Rachel, John. Uh, are you guys still there? I think one and a half past six, Oscar. Okay. Uh, is everybody agreeing to that? Come again? Yeah, I don't think I might even reach it, but yeah. It's okay for me. Yeah, and those those who, who would like to leave, guys, thank you for joining us and, and staying as well too far. Um, I, I thought it would even be shorter because, but then I spent much more time uh, in the beginning there. Those things that we, uh, we were supposed to have covered last week, all those different kinds of prayers and that, you know, I thought it's important that I also cover, it, cover them so that next time you, you, you read. And, but, you know, look, also, when you have sinned, guys, you know, I know we've got hyper grace, uh, uh, future sins. Your future sins are not forgiven. Guys, we are sinners. We must, complete, we must always repent. Jesus comes to the seven churches in uh, Revelation, telling them to repent, you know, and promising them hell if they don't. And you blot them names out, you'll spit them out of their mouth. Because if you don't repent, so there's no... Once saved, always saved in the Bible. This is why when we pray, we say, forgive us as we forgive those who transgress against us. Because if you don't forgive them, God in heaven will not forgive your sins. You know, so David sinned. He slept with uh, Bathsheba, someone's wife, and he killed that man. So he, this is the kind of prayer that he was praying when you're reading Psalm 51. When you have really done something wicked, guys, Pray Psalm 51. Go there, you know, and humble yourself, you know, and cry before the Lord. Uh, fast if you have to. It's one of the things, guys, I know, I know us from the Pentecostal, I know I'm, I'm trying as well to try and make help us unlearn, as I'm unlearning as well. You know, in the, in the Pentecostals and stuff, you know, we, we are taught a lot of proud things. Fasting is usually for you, especially even in the beginning of the year, for you to want things and demand things and to, you know, but fasting in reality, you know, in prayer, it was used for, or if you, if you look at all the occasions of prayer, it's used for when people have sinned and you're trying to get forgiveness from, from God, even if you're interceding for other people. You know, uh, you pray, and also when you are, and also for spiritual warfare, as Jesus has shown us, you know, some demons they don't go uh, unless if you fast and you pray. So you know, it's those kind of con conditions. You know, not just selfish things. You know, when you are in spiritual warfare, fast and pray. You know, and don't always approach God as if you deserve forgiveness and and all of that. You know. So go there and pray for God's mercy, you know, stead us faster. So, so that's when you're reading this stuff and it gives context. So you're able to, to read through what they mean. Uh, now we have to go through some of the Psalms that are usually misinterpreted. Uh, so now, if you understand now Psalm 51, I'm not going to go through all of, 
uh, all of that you have, we have seen what David is praying about now when it comes to verse 11 he says cast me not away from your presence and take your Holy Spirit do not take your Holy Spirit from me so now when you get that context you are able to uh, understand it much more further you know uh, now listen to this in verse 17 so it says for you will not delight in sacrifice or I'll give it you will not be pleased with the burnt offerings the, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit a broken and uh, contrite heart oh God you will not despise so you see you know, it's 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 how it's listen to that spirit of of prayer. You know, and um, when you read that God is not does not delight in sacrifices. Don't think, you know, uh, you know. Now now you get that context. It's in the context of you know what you're praying for your sins and whatever. And if no matter how rich you are, if you're thinking you know you can buy God and you can do things and you know it will not it will not work. You know, you can't buy God, but when you're broken, show your brokenness to God. Show remorse for your sins by being broken. And now, you know, uh, Psalm 30, one of the famous ones, for his anger is but for a moment, but his favor for a lifetime. Weeping may tarry for a night, but joy uh, comes in the morning. So now you are able to understand, for I said in my prosperity, I shall never be moved. You know, you understand when it when a person who is writing, what was going through, what was he going through, you know, and uh, uh, so so people usually pray this prayer. <laughs> people usually use this line when they um when they are going through tough things in life. You know, the devil is attacking you, and you say. Um, Weeping may come at night, but joy comes in the morning. That's not the context, guys. You know, although, because it's a Psalms and it's speaking emotionally, you can, I guess you can still apply it. But once you understand the context, this is the context when, when you have been brought down by God himself, you know, or you have sinned, or you are, you know, you are, you are, uh, uh, and, you know, you are, you are grieving and, you know, and you 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 apply that sort of of psalm. Uh, I wanna move. Um, uh, and now this one. Um, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We have covered Psalm one 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 eight uh, last week, so I don't think I need to rush through it. And I think the Hosanna as well. We've covered it, uh, so I don't need to go through it uh so so again by the way you do not want to use this uh thing is if you've read the actual context of 118 you know so people be careful of on how you interpret the psalm so now we have i'm not gonna go through those ones that we have actually uh -uh. it is stuck guys it is stuck Okay, it's not moving. Uh, but just remind me some of those Psalms that I said we are going to discuss today and I'll give you the context. Because this thing, it's stuck. It does not want to. I said I'll give you the context of some Psalms. This one, Oscar. Be still and know that I am God. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, be still and know that I am God. Because of time as well. If you go and read the context of that scripture, that scripture is not directed at, um, at God's uh, children. It's actually directed at, um, at, at the sinners, uh, at, at the wicked people that... Um, we're coming against the, the, the children of God and God is warning them, you know. Uh, 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 if you go and read the context and it's not directed at you, at you that you must be still and, and know. It's directed at them that they need to be still and know that God is actually 
um, uh, that he is God. It is a threat to your enemies. It is a, it is a you know, it is a, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a radical uh, statement that when you are praying it, it, you should be warning actually uh, your enemies, people that are coming against you. You know, she, like guys, be still and watch what God is gonna do. Don't you think you're tough? You're coming against me. So it's something that it's being prayed against the enemies. You know, they need to know about your God. They need to know about how powerful your God is. Um, and uh, I see here, I don't know if this... Oh, are you, are you still able to see these things, guys? Because now I, uh, this thing was back. I, are you able to see? Are you able to see? Yes. Oh, uh, Psalm 20, 21. Yes. Oh yeah, this is this is a psalm that I, I wrote in my uh, in 2021, as it also suggested. Uh, I actually even composed it, but my garage band music um, software uh, for composing that I'm using it's um, it's not working properly. Uh, but you know, I thought last week I wanted to share it, so I wanted I wanted to close with it as well. But I did actually did a, a small recording uh, that actually I was still writing an idea to say how I'm I'm I going to play it, but um, perhaps perhaps I should just try to get that uh, thing is and play. And guys, uh, I I was just recording the idea, so I did not play it on the right key, so my voice may not be. Uh, at its best, uh, Psalm 20, oh no, what does this thing want? Um, okay, this thing does not want to play. Ah, God, guys, it's your bad luck. Uh, but it is nice with the music because uh, the music will actually disguise my voice of uh, the psalm. So I thought, oh, there. maybe I'll play it. So do, do you did did I put uh are you am I sharing my screen or am I sharing my or are you seeing are you seeing everything or are you seeing the only uh PowerPoint? PowerPoint, we see PowerPoint. Are you seeing only PowerPoint? Yes. Oh, okay. Okay, that wouldn't be a bad idea. Um, so, yeah, so I'm going to try to sing it for you guys. Uh, but excuse my voice and thing is, but this you will be able to see. Already you can see on that line, uh, you know, when my life is catching fire and the smoke chokes when it rises, uh, family and friends are getting tired. Uh, they find a place far where they can hide, you know. Um, you can already see with, with all the poetic writing, you know, with the fire and the tide, the rhymes, you know, the rise and the hide. But then there's also the hyperbole because my life does not really catch fire and, you know, what smokes is choking. But, but emotionally, you are able to, to get it. You, you are able to get where this person is and what is happening and how they are feeling, you know, through all this, uh, you know. So it starts by, by saying, you know, <clears throat> so I'm going to try. I, I don't even have the mic, so I'm going to try to. Uh, it's in a lower key and me, I'm not, I cannot sing on, 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 on that one. So it starts by, when my life is catching fire. And the smoke chokes when it rises. 
family and friends are getting tired. They find a place far where they hide. Gonna try to do for Seto. Troubles don't last forever. I've been here before. It's not a surprise, I remember it won't hurt no more. I remember you, I, I remember you, I always need. I remember you, Waki, I remember you, you always win. And some hooks goes like, I have seen you move the mountain. Rocky Dom. I have seen you split the sea forever and ever. Forever you are king. Forever and ever. Forever you are king. So you've seen that chorus, um, and you know I've even return it more so I've, I've even shot a video because i was in this place where uh there was waters running through and the grass as well or uh, there was stones and were, it was making this nice interesting uh uh, uh uh sound and the birds were also singing so i catch um uh this this line as well and i started singing the waters and the grass they're singing together and the king that the king is on the throne and you know i also wrote even another psalm stemming from that that i'm not going to to bother you with but you know it is one of those things that when you go through stuff when you're singing you know it actually uh you know, it's it's your own sound, guys. You know, you must you must you must be able to write your own sound. But but people as well, when they write songs, we are able to um, to catch uh, their feeling when we are going through similar emotions. Uh, guys, I'm unable to stop this thing. Uh, but yeah, this is where I was actually. Um, this is where actually I should be ending. Travels don't last forever. It's killing me because it's too long. Travels don't last forever. I've been here before. It's not a surprise. I remember it won't hurt no more. Enemies count for nothing. You won on the cross. I remember you, I I remember you, you are always near. I remember you, Waki, I remember you, you always win. Yeah, so it is my psalm, it's not everybody else's psalm, but when you go through stuff. So there, there are many psalms that um, I've written uh, when I was going through different kinds of things. Some are rejoicing, some are praise and worship. Uh, but, you know, they sort of help you when you are going through different kinds of, 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 of things and you can be as colorful as you can. So we've got these psalms that we can sing in church and we can sing together and people can write their own psalms. And I see people writing psalms all the time and everywhere. And we don't all have to be musicians, but we are all human beings with emotions. So you can catch uh, poems, you can catch um, different kinds of songs and things and praises, and we can all sing together. Uh, is there any question and any comment that you want to raise? Just a comment, Oscar. Um, yes. I just wanted to say that uh, I also resonated more with the first few songs because I'm going through a lot and I've been going through a lot for the past couple of months. Yes. So, yeah, um, I also resonated with the first few songs and I couldn't even see myself reading beyond that. I, I just repeated and repeatedly read the first few songs. 
Yes, uh, you know it's 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 good to to hear that. Um, uh, I'm blessed to hear that. You know, and um, you know these sums uh, they help you. Uh, how 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 have they been helping you? How did they make you uh, feel? But first of all, <laughs> um, I love how David addressed his enemies to God. Yes. You know, um, like God will take care of my enemies. God will come through for me. Um, I, I just like how he found solace in God and what God is going to do to his enemies. Um, and that gave me rest. And because sometimes we just want to take over and do things ourselves, you know. Um, I found myself thinking of many things in my life and some of the things I just wanted to take care of them and um, contribute in the, in, the, in the end part of it and um, what's going to happen, the result of it. I, I want to contribute in what's going to happen. But when I started reading these songs, um, I found solace in God and I was like, okay, let me just believe in God and trust in God. Mm. that he will work everything out mm. for my God. Oh, that's very beautiful, man. It's, it's, it's very encouraging as well, you know. And this is why, guys, I said, you know, we need to have these meetings. And, and another thing, guys, once, once you get into also this sort of, of thing, is the attacks will soon also come. Uh, we're, in, we're in a spiritual battle, and, you know, when we also gather, you know, we're able to share. And and sometimes you'll find that you are not alone. You know, you'll find some other sister that is going through the and you're able to, you know, to even form a thing and you pray for one another and you talk and you, you know. Because uh, sometimes you find that some other people are still in ex in other seasons and they, they, won't, they won't be able to understand you. But, you know, I like what we discussed as well today in Psalm 22 and 23 and stuff. When if Jesus himself went through that, you know, you are able to also approach him on um, with that thing, and when you're singing those psalms, and you know, and you're also being realistic. You saw what how Jesus referred to his enemies as well. You know, you are able to. So now, if you go to people who are not either in that season or people who are who are you know Pharisees, you know, or hypocritical, you know, who treat you like you just don't have faith or you're not a true Christian or you're not support. You know, it's it's not good, guys. You know. And one of the things about um, ministers of, of, of the Word of God, God will never, that's why God will never use even celebrities and stuff, uh, people with uh, things and people who haven't been through anything. God always uses uh, suffering saviors, you know. Uh, you go to Moses, find Moses is a prince, is, you know, first take him 40 years, you know, um, of, of and all of them, we must look at all them. David, uh, all, all these guys. You know, you need to go through stuff so that when you are even in leadership and when you are dealing with people, and when people come, you identify with them. You don't just go and tell them, ah, go pray it out, let's, uh, or, or, or whatever. And you, but no, you are able to, uh, to understand. You know, sometimes you don't even to talk and try to. Take, sometimes you just have to take what they're going through, emotion, and just listen, and just be there with them, cry with them, and sing songs, and pray that those kind of prayers. When you pray in those kind of prayers, and stand with them when they are when they are when they are angry at their enemies. Because now, when you when 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 you are with a person from that funny uh, beliefs where we come from. You know, they'll try to make you, force you to praying into things and to confess, to praying for your enemies. But yeah, I appreciate that, uh, Sister Ntlantla. Uh, uh, and, you know, and you'll be surprised that when we are in gatherings and, and we share these sort of things together, as I've seen with our home group, you realize, yo, this sort of things is happening everywhere. You know, there will be one or two that are you know, that are still in some season, you know, that we, that also give us hope that even as we are going to get where they are, you know, but yeah, uh, these sums are very helpful. 
uh, Rachel, John, uh, Mlemba, anything you want to share, comment? No, no, Oscar. Yes. Uh, yes, Mlemba. No, 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 Okay, so I'm going to stop a recording and perhaps we'll close uh, in prayer. Uh, uh, okay, I, I, I will just I will just pray not to put anyone in spot. Maureen is gone. Oh, sorry, Rachel. I, I only saw your message later. Uh, as I said, I don't see the messages. So if you um, if you sent a message, uh, please just um, uh, just 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 uh, speak it out and interrupt me. And sorry, guys, again, I thought today's session was very short uh, because I looked at what the material we had, there and uh, I unfortunately covered some of the stuff that I thought that was supposed to have been covered last week. Otherwise, the material wasn't even going to take uh, thirty or twenty minutes uh, when I checked it. But I spent much more time on on that. Other part. Sorry for that. For those who were prepared shorter time, uh, yeah. Let me uh, close in prayer. Father, we thank you for this uh, wonderful time that you've given us to be here in your presence, uh, and uh, with this fellowship uh, that we are learning about the praises and the psalms, um, the prayers that your children have preserved for years uh, as they are going through the very same things that we go through because nothing is new you are the same today and forever and you uh, our Yahweh you have sent your only begotten son uh, whose name is Yah is our salvation you who is on the throne and you who is seated beside him our Lord Christ you who's our deliverer and you've got all authority and now we no longer fear no evil because you've overcome them and you've disarmed all the powers in all the places and high places and we fear nobody and you've prayed and you've interceded for us to our father while you are still here just before you even even went and you have suffered you have been without food you have been without a place to sleep my Lord, you have blessed us with so much food. We go and we've never suffered even any famine. We've never even suffered. We go to shops. Even during COVID and other shutdowns, Lord, we, st we still lacked nothing. And we know that even if you shut down this world and you bring plagues and everything, we know you have shown it through Elijah that you shall feed us in the caves there. We, we, you are our refuge. We fear nothing. We are not. We know that in you we have everything that we need. And we sing these psalms with praise that even we go through temporary times and in shadows where even death and diseases and everything are guaranteed and we, are, we can't sleep at night and we are turning, tossing and it's, Hard and our heartbeats are rising and we're full of fear. You have been there through the same Christ. You identify with us and when we pray, even when we sleep, even when we, we do stupid things to try and, and, you know, and be like Elijah, my Lord, and we fall and we run away and we, but yet you are still there. You are so huge. You are so big. You are so everywhere. That you will be there and you feed us with ravens. You show us your grace that we don't even deserve. We're supposed to have been fallen, but you take us and you take us and you protect us. And you've prayed for us, our Lord Jesus, that not even one of us that are here will not enter your kingdom. And that's your sovereign power 
that even if we have chosen to do wicked things, my Lord, because you've chosen us, it's only Judas that has been lost. As my Lord, you come for us. You will not, you will whisper and speak to us with that still small voice and we will hear you. Even if it's not that voice, even if you, you, you will take off us and you take us like you've taken Elijah, you know, in a chariot of fire and you keep, keep us in you because we are seated there in heavenly places, in there, in there, in your, by, by your throne room. You are with, we are with you and as much as we are here, you are in our hearts, we are in you, you are in us. And we pray for each and every one of us and all those beloved children of, uh, that may not be part of our group all these South Africans, we're going through different things because you are shining a light uh, after all these years of darkness, of false religion and Phariseeism and everything, you are shining the light on us. And we know once you do that, the enemy is going to come after us and he's going to want to destroy. But we thank you because he has learned even himself that the more he attack us, the more we grow. And we know that many shall hear this truth and many shall come out from among them and false religion and we know that we shall be safe and in the, for the first time in a long time history many of your children are going to enter your kingdom and it's not by our might it's not by our power it by by the power of the holy spirit that shield us even against our own weaknesses our own sins clean us our own sins hear our prayers when we pray when we have sinned and when we are down there when we deserve to die of even diseases and we've eaten what we're not supposed to eat and when we're supposed to, when we've communicated and when we are even committed sexual sins and wicked things and we're supposed to die of aids and all those things and we're supposed to have developed things and you know and be shamed and we've we've stolen and we've we've done all these sort of wicked things and we've got drunk we have taken drugs and we've done all these sort of things before you and when we fall before your faith and we have got a broken spirit we have hurt people we have said destroyed people with our words and we have we've we've killed people we have we have beaten people we have done all this sort of wicked things and we are jealous and we have when we've cut people out of our own lives out of jealousy and out of envy and out of uh and and you know we've lasted about people's people's things and you know we we have just been wicked and when we come to you and we pray before you we pray that lord we we you see our broken spirits because for us to be born again in the first place is because we have repented we are not like those that are going to believe that we deserve, we, but we forgive others as well so that you forgive and then we leave, we leave everything from our past kind of life and we put on the new man to try and impress you and try and be holy as you are holy. And we thank you, Lord, because you have preserved us and we shall enter your kingdom, uh, which is everything. And as we learn more, even next week and as we go, that everybody that has been here and everybody that will watch this will be blessed and your Holy, the same Holy Spirit that is operating today will operate on those that will watch, even, even those that are not part of this small local group, but they are part of your flock that you call. I pray for them, Lord, that you protect them because the enemy comes immediately when the seed is sown and he wants to steal it and he also brings troubles and he also brings um, uh, the desires and the things of the world as you have given us in your powerful parable but protect this your ship as you've protected me and as you've protected your disciples and your apostles and the Christ himself and in that hope that after the, all the sufferings of this world because we are alienated, we are hated for being your believers, and we are, we are forcefully accused everywhere. At the end, you are going to rise us up, and we are going to rule with Christ when he returns, and we shall be in the place of, of royalty and the place of power. And those who are wicked will be in the lower place. And we thank you because that is the hope of our salvation, something that we are looking forward to. And I pray that all of these that are here and all of these that are loving you and worshipping you by being here and staying ours, even though some of the things they may not understand, please listen to this sacrifice of their praise by being here in Jesus' name and save them and give them your grace in all, 
all their lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.